The truth is that black trans femmes, we are rarely identified in a way that inherently offers us grace, love, and support. All of the reasons that my public defender told me that the judge would kind of give me a slap on the wrist were the very reasons that the judge sentenced me to eight to 16 years in Nebraska's Department of Corrections. These kids should be able to come exactly as they are and be seen as perfect. LGBTQ people face a disparate rate of incarceration, levels of arrest, and also interaction with law enforcement. The high incarceration of LGBTQ people isn't really talked about. We refer to it as the discrimination to incarceration pipeline. Hi, I'm Latrice Royale, and this is LGBTQ Nation's Authentic Voices of Pride, presented by Chevrolet. As someone who is formerly incarcerated, the subject of this episode is very personal to me, and that's justice reform for the LGBTQ community. It was very important for me to be outright and upfront about my experience of being incarcerated while I was on RuPaul's Drag Race. I wanted people to realize that their past does not dictate your future. Let's meet Dominique Morgan, who's using her experience in the prison system to help people affected by the carceral state live their best lives. I was born in 1982. It was definitely not a time where people were like bringing their partner home for the holidays and things of that nature. I went into my first group home at 12. And finally at 16, I moved out of my parents' home. I had nothing. Then started sleeping in different alleys, stealing cars to sleep in, and then engaging in survival sex work. Many of the things I did were felonies, and I didn't have any concept of that. Being a young black kid with no money, afraid, and worried about what would be next, I listened to this public defender, and I pled to three of the charges. Black trans women really became centered in my lived experience during my incarceration. I went inside. Someone referred to me as she and her. I was like, why does this feel so like comforting to me? Prison taught me that you can find family anywhere. Prison taught me that people can do terrible things and be beautiful human beings still. We are working at Black and Pink to look at the landscape of how the system impacts people. When we talk about ourselves being the largest prison abolitionist org in the country, we talk about abolition in a larger space because we want to dismantle any barriers that are in our communities for oppressed people to access their best lived experience. Resisting police brutality and discrimination in the justice system has been central to the fight of LGBTQ rights since the beginning of the movement. Stonewall was a protest against police violence. A few years before Stonewall were the Compton Cafeteria riots also against police violence. So our community and our movement is really based on the use of the state power to criminalize and to discriminate against us. We were counsel in a case called Lawrence v. Texas, which was decided by the U.S. Supreme Court in 2003, which concerned the anti-sodomy laws. The Supreme Court found that that was unconstitutional. What those type of laws did was really label us as criminals. If you are a black or brown LGBTQ person, you have a different experience than a white LGBTQ person. Inherently, a simply a black trans child existing means that they'll be impacted by the carceral state. Leiden House is the home that I wish I would have came home to after 10 years in Nebraska's Department of Corrections. It's not a halfway house, it's not a shelter, it's not a three-quarter way home, it is a home. So when I do get my people out of these prisons, they've got a family to come back to. I can't send people out to look for jobs. I can't expect people to focus on sobriety. All these other things that we talk about and folks don't know where they're going to lay their head. When you look at halfway houses, community spaces, Oftentimes, people are trying to make an income, so they're charging people rent. They're, they're trying to fit as many people in the rooms as possible. Here at Leiden House, they don't pay rent. We purchase all of the food. I want you to come and I want you to settle down and I want you to think about what you want to do. 
it's really important to give people space to breathe and think and rest and dream. We've purchased a half of a city block of land in North Omaha, a historically black neighborhood, a few blocks from the birthplace of Malcolm X, and we want to activate it to be a safe space for young people to know that they are loved. The streets that are intersecting Opportunity Campus are the streets that I walked on going to elementary school, going to middle school. The Opportunity Campus space, there is a duplex where there's apartments, but there's also this huge church space that is gonna be our, our outreach, kind of our wraparound around services space. My grandmother used to say, faith without works is dead. And Opportunity Campus is about dreams. And so our tagline for Opportunity Campus is that dreams without works is dead. I wish I knew about Black and Pink or we had some kind of resources. I was released and I was to fan them for myself. I couldn't find a job. If I had a system like Black and Pink to be there for me, that would have made a world of difference in my experience. I think to address the criminalization of LGBTQ people, we need our leaders, the ones who are making these laws, to really understand that our current reliance on criminalizing people and removing them from society and using prisons has not worked. The answer to police misconduct is not more police. We should be looking to ways to keep our community safe through investing in community resources. We know that mental health is an issue that impacts LGBTQ people. We should be investing in programs that keep kids in schools. We should be looking at ways to keep kids who face family rejection um, safe and really listen to what LGBTQ people of color brings to the table when we're talking about criminal justice reform. I don't think it's fair for me to have to ask my oppressor for permission for me to have some sort of relief. And I'm at the point now where I'm gonna use my privilege and access to not ask, I'm going to demand. And where demanding doesn't work, I'm just gonna create it. I don't wanna leave this earth and not know that I've done the work to shift the system from getting a hold of my people. Please consider donating to Lambda Legal and Chevrolet will match donations up to $25,000.